Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of our series, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. Inshallah, today for our 23rd session, we'll be covering the names of Al Qadir, Al Qadir, and Al Muqtadir, uh, names that have the meanings of power, of ability, and capability, uh, and of overpowering or omnipotence. And so, uh, to begin with, inshallah, bismillah, that Allah is able to do all things. And, and we see this every day. Uh, and even if we don't acknowledge it, the things that we take for granted or just assume as given, um, Allah tells us in the Quran that Allah had created this world from nothing and that Allah has the power to make it disappear, that Allah simply needs to say be to something and it is, uh, but that Allah has everything maintained in a balance that Allah has created all of this and sustains all of this. We've been talking about the last few sessions, how Allah is intimately involved in our world, in our creation, uh, is involved in our sustenance and involved in our provision and our existence and all of the different things and recognizing that Allah's power is a thread that runs through each and every one of these that not only is Allah the most of these attributes or the source of these attributes, but Allah uh, is that, that standard of these attributes, that Allah is the most powerful with respect to those attributes. And so uh, the knowledge that we have or the knowledge that we cultivate, inshallah, that Allah is able to do any, anything and everything, uh, and the knowledge that Allah is the all-powerful one, and that we ourselves are limited, if not uh, have no power at all in, in a sense, uh, is why we end up calling upon Allah uh, with respect to our supplications and why we can develop certainty within those supplications or those requests because knowing that Allah is all capable, all powerful, these, uh, these prayers and these requests are going to uh, an entity, going to a destination that has the ability to be able to grant them or grant even other greater possibilities or alternatives. And so uh, with respect to these names, Allah is Al-Qadir, which is the most able, Al-Qadir, which is the omnipotent or the most powerful, and Al-Muqtadir, Al-Muqtadir uh, meaning that the, uh, the one who's perfect in ability. Uh, it's a, a, a more intensive form uh, of, the, of the Arabic root that all three of these names come from, which is Qaf, Dal, and Ra. Uh, which have the meanings of power and ability, as well as measuring or making manifest the measure of something. If that something is uh, able to be, uh, you know, made manifest, or, or there's more to to what there is, um, being able to uh, bring that to light. And so, uh, all three of these names are found in the Quran. Al Qadir is referred to, and Allah says that, "Do they not see that?" Allah is the one who created the heavens and the earth, and Allah is the one able to create the likes of them anew. And Al-Qadir is mentioned when uh, it says in the Quran, it is he, Allah, who created you uh, human beings from fluid uh, and then made you uh, and then made them kin by blood and marriage. Your Lord is all powerful. And Al-Muqtadir in the context of the righteous will live securely among gardens and rivers, secure in the presence of a sovereign, perfect in ability, Al-Muqtadir. And so Al-Qadir is the one who is able to do everything um, by from causing things to exist, to seizing their existence, causing them to change or to return to what they were uh, with respect to their state. Uh, Al-Ghazali comments as well that Allah's ability to bring about the resurrection and the qiyamah at any point reflects that aspect of uh, measurement as well, that uh, you have uh, Allah can bring this out at any point, but Allah measures what is best to be brought out at a certain time. So when we, when we mentioned that the root hat can have the meaning of making manifest the, the measure of something as well, that Allah has the ability to uh, make you know, qiyamah, the resurrection, manifest at, at, at any time at, as according to Allah's decree, but Allah uh, has that set for a certain time or Allah has the, the, um, the ability to bring it out at a certain time or to withhold it until a certain time or can reveal it uh, up until you know, a certain time. So you have signs and things like that that lead up to that. Um, and then Al-Muqtadir is the 
intensive form, as I mentioned, of that shared root that not only it's the one who is, uh, you know, powerful, not only is the one who is able, but is even more so uh, in that in that respect that Allah is perfect in that sense is perfect in that in that aspect. Um, and then uh, Al Qadir is the one with absolute uh, power, which no one can stop or oppose. And so these names encompass Allah's power to decree and carry out the divine decree or the other. Uh, and when we talk about, given the uh, the timing of our uh, session and given the timing of the month in which we are in the final 10 nights of Ramadan, uh, and each of us, inshallah, is trying to do our best to observe, witness, and experience Laylatul Qadr, um, we see that uh, we're talking about a night that has the same root as these names of uh, Qaf, Dal, and Ra, uh, a night of power, a night of decree, uh, a night of ability, a night of destiny, whatever you want to kind of call it, um, that it has these roots. And, and, and these names especially have uh, a special significance when we, when we tie those together to not just see the nuance of the night, but be able to understand who can we call upon uh, during these nights when we are trying to achieve a night that is better than a thousand months, knowing that Allah is the one that is most capable. Allah is the one that is most able. Allah is the one that's most powerful and the most, uh, you know, in, in a sense, the, the most uh, omnipotent to be able to bestow this upon us. And so there's no coincidence that, uh, that these names share that root uh, with Layla Tudkabar. And so these names remind us in uh, of the slight nuance in the sense that uh, Allah has power uh, over all things. These all, names all have the meanings and connotations of power and of ability, but they show us the nuance that, that we have, the intensity in certain aspects. We lifted up verses in the Quran where Allah uh, himself will mention the nuances in different verses that when referring to the creation of the heavens and the earth, uh, and then the question of bringing them back uh, again or anew, Allah lifts up Al-Qadir. And then uh, when talking about creating human beings from uh, basically a, a speck of fluid and then making them into uh, families and kin and you know social beings, that Allah is uh, Al-Qadir, that Allah is all-powerful, that is capable of all things. And then uh, when talking about Al-Muqtadir, or perfect in ability, the promise that is to come, that the righteous, that... Uh, are, are here on earth now will have, what, regardless of what their state is now, if they're persecuted, if they're pushed to the side, they're marginalized, they're hurt, um, that they will live securely in the garden, secure from any uh, else uh, that is a threat to them and in the presence of the one who is perfect in ability. So seeing these, these names and that nuance, but sharing that image. Remember, we talked about that Allah's names can't just be isolated from one another and Allah is just this name and not these other names. Allah is all these names all together all the time, and especially these names, but to show us the different intensities and the beauty of how Allah operates with respect to this aspect of power and ability. And so, inshallah, when we, uh, when we think about these names, the, as I mentioned, they remind us of the nuance uh, in the power of Allah, but they remind us that we should know that while we might be limited in our power and our ability to just our corporeal dimension and uh, what we see here, that Allah is capable of all things and that whatever difficulties we face, we can overcome if we seek that strength from Allah, even if it is uh, the biggest uh, overcoming or obstacle that we have is ourselves. And so knowing that Allah is capable of all things uh, inherently opens you up to more possibilities. Uh, that, that it's not just, you know, if we, if we truly trust that Allah is most capable of all things and something doesn't go our way, we have the trust that Allah will open up a better way or another way for us to be able to achieve whatever it is that we'd like or whatever it is that we set our heart to or something else that comes about. So we lift that up and this actually inherently inserts more hope into the, uh, into the request, into the possibility. It puts more faith into that experience. And so we see this example time and time again of uh, Allah enabling uh, certain blessed individuals and, and people of Allah to overcome immense obstacles or to even open up other possibilities, even if it was a certain objective that didn't go their way. In the case of the Prophet Muhammad and the religion of Islam, 
the Quraysh didn't convert immediately. They, they had to go through Medina, they had to go through Taif and Medina uh, and go through a 23 year enterprise in, um, and you know, a whole process uh, of you know, being able to uh, teach your religion, learn and all these different things and then go to Abyssinia and all these different things before they could come uh, and make the, not just the, the tribe, the nation and the, that land uh, a, a, a Muslim land or one that followed the religion of Allah, but eventually a nation and a people that spread from China to Spain calling la ilaha illallah. That uh, there are other, there's other alternatives. It could have been an easier way just to say, go proclaim the message and then everything comes about in one isolated bubble. But Allah showed us in different stages, different outlets were opened up to a religion now that uh, is, is, you know, encompassing of almost 2 billion believers. And so just seeing the how that came about. Uh, think about uh, Musa and Fir'aun, uh, the possibilities that opened up uh, apart from the fact that, you know, when, when Musa went to Fir'aun and Fir'aun, you know, rejected, but seeing that it could have been just, you know, why, why can't Pharaoh just accept now? There's different outlets that opened up, different possibilities that opened up. You see of David and Goliath, you see Hajar and Ismail, that different things open up. There's a stream that opens up here. It could very easily be that Respite comes from one space, but uh, there's other striving and other efforts that cultivate um, different lessons in different spaces. And so Allah is capable of all things, but Allah is also capable and opening of other paths and possibilities. And the power extends to this as well. So how do we live with these names? Recognize that Allah is capable of all things, that you yourself are powerful if the source of your power is Allah. The source of your power is this world. It is very finite and it will run out at some point. But ultimately, if your power is tr trusted to Allah, then Allah um, is a source that is infinite and boundless. But again, remember Allah's power, Allah's ability, Allah's anything comes from a source of good. It does not go into uh, that which is harmful, oppressive, lying, deceitful, or anything like that. Allah's power is that which comes from a good source. And so your power, when you, exer which you, when you exercise it, is one that should be and should be done from a sort a, a position of goodness and a position of righteousness. And so your power, if you draw it from Allah, has an endless source. And that when you pray, have certainty. Because Allah is Al-Qadir. Allah is the one who is the most powerful, the most perfect in power. And ask Allah based on Allah's ability, not just yours. That rely, that's what prayer is in a sense, depending on Allah for that. Uh, which you know that you've defined your limits for, that Allah is the one who can make all things happen beyond anything else. And so understand to not be reckless in a sense that uh, this, this, this name does not give us license to just think that we can go do anything and that we're going to jump off a building and Allah is most powerful, Allah will protect the serpents. No, Allah still has created gravity, so you will experience that gravity in the fullest and because Allah is all powerful. But uh, understand that this name with great power comes great responsibility and knowing that Allah is most powerful, most able, recognizes us that we need to have mindfulness of that. We need to be responsible of that to uh, humble ourselves and to know that because Allah is most powerful, most capable, that we should be mindful uh, in, in our requests and how we approach this, but not to take things into our own hands to our own detriment or to harm other people. Uh, to be open to possibilities that our way is not the only way. And lastly, to pray istikhara, the istikhara prayer um, in matters of importance. It recognizes that our own ability is limited and that we've, uh, we entrust the decision-making, we entrust whatever comes about to Allah, uh, who is limitless, who is most capable to help us guide uh, ourselves and to help us decide whatever matter it is. So inshallah, we ask Allah to um, make uh, our situations easy, make our decisions easy because uh, Allah is the most powerful. Allah is the most able. Allah is the perfect in the ability and the in omnipotence and power and all these things. And we ask Allah to uh, allow these names to be a source uh, and multiple sources of our own power, uh, but to allow different things to be opened up to us and allow our hearts to see that power manifest when Allah opens different possibilities, not just getting us stuck at uh, one specific thing that we would like. And so inshallah, we ask Allah to open our hearts to these possibilities and that Allah allows us to become those people who are able to overcome so many different odds through whichever means Allah deems appropriate. Until next time, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.